Welcome to the Bacchus Showcase. The subject this time is the armies of the European crisis 1618 to 1660. The aim of this series of short videos is to take examples of figures from our ranges and view them in greater depth than is possible on our website. We also provide a, a quick view of what is available in terms of rules for the armies and finish off with a, a speedy guide to painting and presenting Finnish units. But if you would like us to cover one of your favourites, please let us know via the comment section or by email or through Facebook. The years 1618 through to 1660 in Europe were tumultuous. The Thirty Years' War saw Western Europe convulsed with an unending series of campaigns as religion mixed with realpolitik in a toxic combination culminated in the ascendancy of France and Sweden and the beginning of the long decline of Spain. Britain managed to stay out of the war on the mainland but also suffered a series of civil wars that saw bloody conflict across England, Scotland and Ireland. It's a hugely fascinating period of history packed full of amazing characters. It's also one of my personal favourite areas of study and chimes with my years spent in English Civil War enactment. The Bacchus figures for this period is one of our newer ranges and benefits from some breathtaking sculpting and an attention to detail that sets it apart from all other models, no matter what the scale. WEC1 and WEC3 Pikemen at the advance. Pikemen served as the anchor for an infantry battalion. Both the unarmoured and armoured versions hold their pikes vertically at advance, with a pike held in a posture that could easily be switched to the more offensive charge position. On a technical note, these figures are stood correctly with the right foot in advance of the left and the pike cupped in the hand with knuckles facing forward. You'd be surprised how many sculptors, often in larger scales, get these basics wrong. WEC5 and WEC6 Musketeers in Montero Cap and Monmouth Cap. Along with WEC7 and 8, all the Musketeers share the same basic pose with a musket shouldered on the left. As is correct, these soldiers stand with their left foot in advance of their right. We supply four alternative options for headgear. Monmouth cap, Montero cap, brimmed hat and helmet, all of which covers a large range of variants and nationalities. WEC 9, 10, 11 and 12. Musketeers firing and loading. Four musketeers in file, with the front rank presenting their muskets and the subsequent ranks in various stages of loading and making ready. All of the various poses are based upon period drill posture and are extremely accurate, right down to in which hand the match cord is being held. Once again, you have the option of different headgears depending on the period and the army that you wish to model. All of the musket packs have their own command strips, consisting of sergeants and non-commissioned officers. WEC 14 – Dismounted Dragoons Dragoons were mounted infantry that could prove useful on the battlefield and invaluable in campaigns. Dragoons were not cavalry and did not fight from horseback. They rode to a point and dismounted, and as such they are essentially dressed and equipped as musketeer infantry, not horse. You will note that instead of an infantry colour, the dragoons carry their own distinctive dragoon guidon. WEC 17 and 18 horse in hat and cuirassiers. The horse are also known as arquebusiers and these mounted troops came to be the mainstay of most European armies. Ideally equipped with buff coat, back and breastplate and helmet 
and are with sword, pistol and carbine. They were cheaper to raise and maintain than cuirassiers, but could be highly effective battlefield cavalry. The cuirassiers were the archetypal heavy cavalry of the period, armoured from top to toe and mounted on big solid horses. They were the main battlefield cavalry at the start of the period, but gradually fell out of favour as the years went by due to their expense and lack of flexibility. WEC 20, 21 and 22 Battalion guns, Saker and Siege Artillery These three models cover the main types of artillery pieces found in 17th century armies. The very small battalion guns would accompany a battalion of infantry on the battlefield. The field artillery would play a part in a battle but remain in fixed emplacements. And finally, the very large pieces were used in sieges to break down walls and the resistance of the besieged. WEC 25 Generals Generals during this period came from a wide range of backgrounds. Motivated amateurs, religious zealots and career soldiers could all rub shoulders with military entrepreneurs and even the occasional soldier king. These wonderfully sculpted and animated models make the perfect centrepieces for your army, no matter what nationality or faction they may come from. As with most war games periods, there are a number of different options in terms of war games rules to choose from. I'm just going to look at three. And the first that I would recommend covers the English Civil Wars and is our very own Polymus ECW rules. They work on the eminently sensible option of one base representing a tally of foot or a squadron of horse and are designed to play large actions in a reasonable time. They also come complete with the most comprehensive set of army guides for the period available in any single publication. As with all of our ranges, we offer starter army packs for the period, concentrating in this case on the English Civil War. We also have an excellent range of flags available for both the Thirty Years War and the wars in the British Isles. For those interested in starting the period, our box set offers excellent value for money, as the package includes rules, two full armies, bases, flags, scenics and a painting guide. The King and Parliament were a popular recent arrival, once again covering the English Civil War. They use many of the same basing and organisational principles as Polymos, but the rules use a gridded table and a card-based combat and morale system. Finally, we have the Twilight of Divine Right rules, which share many of the virtues of the previous two sets, but are the only ones to cover the Thirty Years' War as well. We know that for many newcomers to Six Mill, the prospect of painting the figures can seem really daunting, but as any experienced six mil game will tell you, it really is far simpler than you could think. Basic painting techniques will be covered fully in other videos on this channel, but the following example should give you an idea of just how quick and simple a process this really is. Starting from a black undercoat, the first stage is to paint the coats and breeches, and these musketeers will all be grey coats. Now the aim of this coat is not to completely cover the relevant areas, but to leave large bits of black showing which will later serve to define and shade the finished figures. The next stage is to paint the bandolier strap, and I'm using a buff shade here. Next comes white, which appears on the cuff turnbacks and run across the front of the socks, or as we should say, the hose. Next comes brown. Hair gets painted brown, all my recruits have brown hair. The same colour is used on the musket butts and stocks, and on the bandolier charges that hold the gunpowder. The figure starts to come to life, with flesh appearing on the hands and the face. And the final stage is to complete painting all the knitted monmouth caps with grey or brown, and to paint the silver 
on the musket barrels. And in this case, rather than silver paint, I'm using a light grey. It sounds crazy, but it works really nicely, and I prefer the effect to that of just using silver paint. Now that's just five steps. And you end up with what's really a very sharp looking war games unit. Yes, you could take a little more care, add a few highlights, but to be honest, I think you'll agree it's not really strictly necessary. Now I hope that you've enjoyed this little showcase from our European Crisis range. I will leave you with a turntable shot of one of my big bases for the period. This is actually a, a viable war games unit and it's suitable for use with all three of the featured rule sets. And yes, I do fully intend to get a game together using them. I hope you enjoy them. Goodbye. <laughs>